We have some amazing news. Has everyone, anyone here ever heard of JavaScript? <laughs> Node.js? I love this community. I'm going to introduce you quickly, but I'm going to say this one thing. The Node, if you use any kind of NPM package or any, you know, uh, Webpack, Babel, anything, these are like the unsung heroes of code today, in my opinion. Like, there is like gajillions of I think out. we sing rather well. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, Jory and Miles have this amazing news today. It's our last announcement before we quick go to a break. Uh, I'm not going to steal their thunder, so please take it away. Thanks, Welcome. Jim. Thank you. Good morning, Miles. Good morning, Jory. Um, we need our clicker. Yeah. Do we not have a clicker? Nope. Right there. Oh, ah. on the chair. Perfect. I was going to try clapping if yeah. we couldn't find it. So Jory, um, what do all of these projects have in common? Well, um, they all have really cool logos. That's true. Um, they're all uh, JavaScript projects. Mm -hmm. hmm, what else? As of today, they're all part of the new OpenJS Foundation. We're really excited uh, <laughs> to announce this work. Um, with the JS Foundation and the Node.js Foundation joining forces. Um, and, you know, as said by the, wise, the very wise Spice Girls, you know, when two foundations become one, um, you become a new thing. And we're, we're looking at um, what was the JS Foundation and what was the Node.js Foundation uh, coming together to build something bigger. And for both of our organizations, we had different reasons to do this. That's right. So for the JS Foundation and our projects, Node is a really important tool in the ecosystem, and its community is a pretty invaluable resource. So uh, we really thought that the opportunity to organize and collaborate with this community much closer was just immensely appealing. Um, and the opportunity to, try, to bring in some of those um, fresh uh, new contributors to the Node, uh, from the Node.js developer community into our projects was um, quite, uh, quite a big benefit. And no picture of the JS ecosystem is complete without Node. And um, from the Node.js perspective, we wanted to participate in a multi-project foundation. We had tried to do this before within our own foundation through an incubation process, and we're not super successful. We also wanted to share and refine some of our best practices. Um, in Node.js, we've done a lot of work on open governance, as well as new ways of um, being transparent in meetings and in communication. We wanted to take some of these best practices and share them with other projects. And most importantly, we wanted to find a sustainable approach and build a foundation that can outlast a project. You know, as Jim mentioned, Node is used in a lot of places right now, a lot of like mission critical software. Um, but we don't know that that will be forever. And so, you know, things are very great for Node right now, and we should use those resources to rise the tide for everyone, but also set up a foundation that means when those resources aren't necessarily coming to Node, we're not going to have to worry about how we're going to keep the lights on and maintain things uh, at a later date. So we're definitely trying to come together to be more than the sum of our parts. Um, the OpenJS Foundation is going to leverage the, both, uh, the best of both the JS Foundation and the Node Foundations, um, drawing from the collective experience of our communities, um, and continue to serve those communities, plus new ones, um, whether you are using Emacs or VS Code, Tab Spaces, what have you. Um, so we want to go through really quickly some of the um, mission objectives of the new foundation. So, uh, of course, first we want to promote the widespread adoption and continued development of JavaScript and web solutions in order to hopefully present a really unified front and message about the impact and value of JavaScript-based uh, technology on enterprise technology stacks. We also exist to facilitate collaboration within the JavaScript developer community. We're all building on each other, we're all depending on each other, and we need to think about this collectively and together. Um, we want to create a center of gravity for open source projects, um, bringing them all together to work on best practices around open governance, around um, how we build diverse, inclusive, and really healthy uh, developer communities over the long term. And we also um, exist to enable open and accessible web through the advancement of projects and strategic partnerships. It goes without saying that every single project that was, is within this foundation really, really cares deeply about the open web and what it means as a powerful technology for empowering individuals around this world, and we're committed to making it better than it is today. 
So um, getting here was really not an easy task at all. Um, even though the idea to bring these groups together had been hanging in the air for, for years and years, um, the real energy behind coming together came together at um, the Open Source Leadership Summit last year uh, to sort of figure out the feasibility, um, the, the wisdom of such a move. And so we um, proceeded with some due diligence and brought our um, communities together fairly quickly after the merger announcement, which occurred in October of 2018, to start learning from each other, to start imagining the possibilities and, and creating some ideas for what a joint foundation could really look like. Um, and that really started to pick up the pace at our uh, collaborator summit uh, at Node and, and JS Interactive. So as, as Jory was mentioning, um, you know, this merger or like whether or not there should be two foundations was something that was talked about for a while. It was definitely a huge topic for those of us who were at the summit last year. And um, by October, though, it's like, how do you turn that idea between a handful of active collaborators and board members into a thing that has community buy-in? And what we did is we ran weekly community merge meetings. And it was every Monday with alternating times. This was so that we could be open to various time zones. In the morning meetings, we would have people from Asia and Africa participating, as well as Europe. And in the afternoons, the people from the Pacific Standard Time Zone who didn't want to wake up at 6 AM were able to come and participate, too. <laughs> Um, all the meetings were live streamed. They were recorded on YouTube with collaborative note taking and Google Docs that were eventually archived into the repo where we were doing all this work. The attendance to these meetings ranged from 10 to 30 people a week, which included members of both boards, um, leaders of all the various projects within the foundation, as well as just collaborators who are interested in the process or had questions about very particular bits. Um, as was necessary as well, we would spin up ad hoc meetings to dig into very particular contentious subject matter um, because even with a weekly cadence, sometimes a whole meeting could be de derailed about one thing that people didn't agree about. Um, but overall, doing this and doing this in a very transparent and recorded way meant that like, I would go and talk to people about, hey, you know, we're doing this thing, would you like to join? And they would be like, oh, we've been following it the whole time. And it was really interesting to be talking to people and try to get them updated. And they'd be like, no, we've already followed the whole thing. You don't need to, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and, and so another big uh, part of that, getting a consensus and making sure everybody was on the same page about agreement, was coming up with a staging process, which we borrowed from the TC39's um, staging process for their proposals for things that go into the language. And this really helped us make sure that our ideas were getting refined, um, that we were kind of coming to further and further agreement as we, we moved along, and kept everybody on the same page about the status of different ideas um, as, as we proceeded with work. We could then tag different issues for further discussion outside the meeting or um, to meet together again in the meeting and say, yes, we've all kind of come to an agreement. Let's advance this to the next stage. We also made sure to be doing constant feedback. So we had lots of email updates that were going to the various committees, even though they were invited to every single meeting. It turns out people don't show up to every meeting that they're invited to. So we made sure that the people who had a vested interest in where things were going had constant updates. We also would hold ad hoc meetings just for those groups. And we also held multiple town hall sessions, which were actually turning into a regular occurrence within the foundation, where not only were all the projects asked to join, but anyone from the community could participate and ask questions. And this similarly was broadcast live on YouTube and is recorded and archived, and people can dig it up and watch it in the future. So um, here's a quick look at the resulting governance structure that came out of all of these conversations. Um, we have a uh, cross-project council that sort of helps um, coordinate all the activities across different projects um, and it kind of becomes the place where conversations about project needs, special programs that really benefit projects come together, as well as your standard um, board entity uh, that works on sort of the legal um, mumbo jumbo that we may or may not really care to hear about uh, in, in our individual projects. And what, one of the things that I'm particularly proud that we came to conclusion on this is the Cross Project Council will actually, the meetings will be open to any member of any foundation project to come and participate fully in the um, planned consensus seeking model in there. So if we want to add new projects to the foundation, we need to reach consensus within the Cross Project Council. Now, if consensus, if consensus can't be reached, there's going to be a small peer group of voting members who can break um, times when we don't have consensus. But if you want to do something like bring in a new project or make major changes or figure out where budget goes, if we need to be working together, this ensures that not only can we work together, but we're doing it in an egalitarian way. And we're not creating unnecessary power structures that are going to stop our growth. 
Um, and there's a lot of reasons why this rocks. Um, that open participation, I'm a huge fan of. Um, the projects can also keep their current process, which Jory can speak to from the JSF side. Right, so um, with 28 projects coming in from the JS Foundation, everybody works a little bit differently. Some are small projects that just have one main uh, project maintainer with a few helpers, others are much bigger. So we needed to be flexible in terms of allowing projects to bring what works for them into this new organization. Um, another thing that uh, was really important about this was allowing projects the flexibility to move between stages as they mature, as their needs change, as they um, go throughout their project life cycle, this, uh, this pattern really helped um, give them the flexibility that they needed to be successful. So I think it goes without saying that the future is pretty cool and we're pretty excited about it. There's still some work that we need to do. The CPC hasn't been officially formed yet, so we're going to be bootstrapping that and getting that going. We have an executive director search. So hey, anyone in the audience, yeah. come find us. If you like executing and directing, we may, uh, <laughs> we may want to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there is some housekeeping that we need to do as well to get everything in order. Um, and we're going to be having an all-project collaboration summit in Berlin on May 30th and 31st. So if you're in you know, Germany and want to come by, we're going to be all working together on this. Um, We'd love for you to come help us craft the future of uh, the OpenJS Foundation and the JavaScript ecosystem at large. Um, so please come join us. We're uh, live at openjsf.org. Um, also, if you're really intrigued to learn more about how we ran this process, which was pretty wild and pretty awesome, um, we are going to do an unconference session on Thursday at 2.30 in the Montara room so we can get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty. And we're going to be holding a conference, Node Plus JS Interactive, December 10th to 12th in sunny Montreal, so please come join us. <laughs> there is like 10 hotels that are directly connected via tunnels to the venue, so it's going to be good. Um, and poutine. Um, but I know we're over, but really quickly, all the people that we want to thank, a huge thank you to Chris Borchers. Yep. I can't tell if you're in the audience right now, but a huge vision and driving force between doing this from the beginning. The Node.js Board of Directors. The JSF Board of Directors, of course, all of our project communities, um, which were really integral in, in feedback gathering process. Um, Known your TSC and the ComCom, thank you guys. Um, the LF team who helped us, Brian, Mike, Caitlin, Sarah, Zibby, and many, many more. Um, all of the effort that the LF did to help us here, we wouldn't be where we are right now. And of course, all the various JavaScript devs around the world. Um, and with that, just slightly over, we're done. Thank Boom. you so much. We'll be around. Awesome. So I want to just, I love this project. You know, uh, not to name drop here, but I was talking to Vince Cerf uh, backstage at a conference we were both presenting at one time. <laughs> just trying to big time. Yeah. He said something really interesting that you have just demonstrated, which is the IETF, the W3C, kind of all these like iconic institutions we think of today. He said, you know, we kind of created these institutions as we needed them. And literally, that's exactly what you've done. I just love to see how you've like worked with the community, created this process. You're, you're, you're like the modern version of these, you know, you have people who worked on this, the foundation of a lot of internet technology, creating institutions as we, as we needed them. So it's just amazing work. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.